that's true. And and I, well, to be honest with you, uh, I, when her body came to to, to back to, to Missouri uh, back in '05, uh, which would have been oh, what maybe like the 25th, I think. I looked her body over. Thank God I had enough courage to do that because I thought it was going to be harder than it was. I guess I was just driven to see what it is I wanted to see. And if you can imagine her hairline on the left side of her head and then imagine between her hairline and her frontal lobe, then you go up almost to the top of her head but to the left side, you got a hole in her head. And they've got her hair skin back, her scalp skin back. And you can actually take a pencil and stick it down in that hole. And that is surely not an exit wound from an M16 rifle. Certainly not. You're yeah. talking about she was shot in the, like the left temple? Yeah, somebody right-handed stood up over her on the left side and shot her. And when they shot her with a hand revolver, the bullet grooved uh, two and one quarter inches before it went in and then it hit the front of her uh, temple, and then you can actually see the path of the bullet going behind her left eye. And when I met the medical examiner up in Washington, D.C. in July of last year, he said it was the gases from the weapon swelling up her head. Oh, this is absurd. <laughs> this is absurd. Yeah, it is. This is absurd. Yeah, and not only that, her, <laughs> her, her, her nose was broke from right to left and concave. So somebody had smashed her in the face with a, maybe the butt of a rifle? Her, her rifle. Her own rifle. They hit her with her rifle. With her own rifle. Yeah, and not only, and they hit her twice. If she was going out jogging, Dr. Johnson, she wasn't taking a rifle with her. Well, I, I don't know uh, if, if that's protocol or not, but there is some debris hanging off of her rifle that the Army never identified. But the damage to her, her face tells it all. Because that blow, someone stood up, and, and again, we're talking about a right-handed person, and she was down, uh, probably kneeling at the time, and somebody was holding her up. So it was more than one person. They hit her in the face. It broke her nose from right to left and concave. It, it split her mandible right down, the fr right down the middle. And because her mandible got split, her teeth shifted on the left-hand side to the front. So when they hit her the second time in her mouth, her molars on the back side of her mouth got three perfect teeth print on her top lip, like she bit into her lip. And you don't do that from sticking a weapon in your mouth. You do that from getting hit. In Unbelievable. The teeth. There's nothing here suggestive of suicide, nothing remotely suggestive of suicide. I'm going to give you one more thing to take into consideration. Lividity. Uh, if she has shot herself, fell on her back because all the pictures that they have, she's on her back. The medical examiner in the Army, which he was an Air Force person, but he was at Dover Air Force Base, said that lividity was posterior. Now, they put this language in these autopsies, and they're hoping that you don't have the kind of interest or savvy or whatever the case to understand what the hell they're talking about. Yes. So, but, but, but I have a brother that have a degree in criminal science. So you're talking about a book writer who creates these kind of crime scenes. Even though I've got a couple of science fiction books, I made crime scenes out of them, you know, and I got detectives walking their way through the evidence, etc. And then a brother with a degree in criminal science, what is the likelihood that when they sent us this information, we weren't going to figure it out? At any rate, the vividity, if you look at the pictures that they sent us, is on the left side of her body, all the way down through her left side, her, her left leg is just clogged with it. And so that says when she died, she was lying on the left side. Yes. So she was actually murdered someplace else and then dropped in that contractor's tent. And then the Army tried to say, uh, well, the witnesses said the tent was on fire. So somebody tried to burn the tent down with her body in it. But they going to make it seem like, well, she had a, a campfire that she was trying to burn emails. Well, that's not what the witnesses said. They said the tent was on fire. And in addition to that, she had a bench lying on her upside down, and it, uh, an excellent was lit and set on the bottom of the bench. So they actually tried to burn her up, but she was also burned 
on the right side of her body. So we don't know if somebody poured something on her and lit it or if they used a spray can and, and you know, and burned her. But her clothes weren't burned, so she was nude when that happened. And I take it some caustic substance was poured on the private parts of her body. Yeah, it looks like uh, it, her, her vaginal area, it looks like it's lie on line, uh, you know, that they use in concrete to make it turn white and hard. And, and whatever they poured in there, it had collagenated. And so you're talking about her vaginal area being open a good half an inch. It, you know, it wouldn't even let it allow it to close up, and it's just hanging out of her. Presumably and, to destroy evidence of sexual assault. It, you, correct. And then you got the Libya on the right side, If you as you're looking at the picture, that's swollen and bruised on one side, and the other one is collapsed. Evidence of got, sexual assault. Yeah, and then you got tears in the Libya. So it was a sexual assault. So of course, you know, every young woman who's about to commit suicide is going to pour caustic substance on her genitalia because she wants to experience this exquisite pain. Yeah, right. This is so disgusting, Dr. Johnson. I mean, yeah. this is absolutely, this is as blatant as it could be. Yeah, it's, uh, it's bizarre. And, and you know, when you put the information that they sent you, well, actually, what they they they, they did, uh, they took ten months to to investigate the the the, 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 the crime. That that was problem number one because it don't take any genius ten months to 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 you know investigate a suicide. But at any rate, they sent us black and white Xerox copies of everything. And so when I was going through them, and I called my brother, and I said, hey, man, I said, these people sent me black and white stuff, man. I said, these pictures aren't even really clear. I said, I know good and well professional photographers for the military took better pictures than these. So he said, uh, bring them, let me look at them. So we made a copy for him. He called me up, and he said, John, he said, first of all, man, these pictures are airbrushed. He said, that's why they're so distorted. He said, but you come over here, man. I want you to see something. So when I went over to his house, he laid that picture of that vaginal area in, in front of me. And I, first I couldn't even tell what it was. Yes. It, it, and, then I, and then they had so much, you know, uh, activity involved with it. And so I said, man, I said, what the heck? Is then it hit me. I said, is that my daughter's vaginal area? He said, yeah. And we originally thought somebody had jammed something up in her. Yeah. But when he said that, I said, yeah, but why would it be white? He said, no, nah, that's a good point. So he said, well, uh, he said, well, where's your CD? And I said, what CD? He said, there's a picture of a CD-ROM in your package. He said, you didn't get a CD? And I said, no. So I wrote the Army, and I asked them for that CD, and they told me I wasn't entitled to it. And you so weren't entitled back, to it. Yeah, and I wrote him back and I said, well, according to the Privacy Act, my daughter's dead and I'm next to Ken. I'm entitled to each and everything that belongs to that, that pertains to her. They wrote me back and they lied and said there were names on the CD and we have to protect those people. I wrote them back again and I said, wait a minute. If they are principal parties involved in my daughter's death, I'm entitled to their names. So then they wrote me back and told me to get in contact with their legal department. Well, I knew there was no need in me doing that because I was going to still get run around. So what I did, I went to Congressman Lacey Clay and filled out a Freedom of Information Act for him to get a copy of that CD for me. Good. Well, as you know, when they had the Jessica Lynch Pet Tillman hearing, he happened to be on the Governmental Reform Committee. And so he asked the general that day uh, uh, about about uh, getting a copy of that CD. And that general sat there and told him he had no idea who Lavina Johnson was. So he lied to Congress because he knew. At any rate, he went to Clay and told Clay that uh, I had everything I was entitled to. So I understand that Clay then went to Henry Waxman and that uh, committee and that committee ordered the Army to send them the CD. And so when they got the CD, they sent me a copy of it. And, man, when we started looking on it, man, there's blood all over the damn place. It's horrible. It is horrible. And then that vaginal area, we looked for that one intentionally, and when we found it, it was shocking. God. Yeah, it was shocking. 